So we get to the whole keys to the kingdom business. What about that? I'll give you a moment to admire the clip art. Ooh. Ah, thank you. And what's uh, Peter holding? Keys. 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 So what's that all about? Matthew 16, 18, and 19, Peter is described as the rock upon which Jesus will build his church. And he's assigned the keys to the kingdom. Well, what's that all about? That sounds pretty cool. 17, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Remember, Petros means rock. Great. I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we get into what is probably one of the most controversial set of verses in the whole Bible. What does it mean that he's the rock upon which I will build my church? But more importantly, what does it mean that he's been given the keys of the kingdom? Uh, the keys to the kingdom and what's all that stuff about whatever you bind on earth it will be bound in heaven I mean that sounds like Peter's got an awful lot of power so what's this all about well the reason that there's some controversy to this is because the Roman Catholic Church and almost all Protestant churches interpret this entirely differently if you ever been in a court hearing you know that two different people can see the same set of events and have entirely different interpretations of it the same thing here. So, keys to the kingdom, traditionally interpreted by the Roman Catholic Church, is indicating that the Christian church has received its authority from the legacy of Peter. Uh, you can also get this out of John 21, 16, where Jesus says to Peter, take care of my sheep. This is pretty important stuff, because who do Roman Catholics say was the first pope? Peter. Peter. All popes after Peter get their authority from Peter as being given the keys to the kingdom and being the rock upon which uh, Jesus built his church. So the, the argument about who brought Christianity to Rome was it first, was it Peter or was it Paul? There is some political importance to that because if it wasn't Peter, well then... Paul would have been the first bishop. Then, then, then Paul, you could look at as, as the first leader in Rome. Protestants have a different interpretation. Is anybody shocked by that? No. They interpret the rock and key passages to indicate that it's the faith of Peter is the rock upon which I will build my church. And that faith is the keys to the kingdom. Uh, Roman Catholic tradition records that Peter was the first bishop of Rome. And all Catholic popes are spiritual descendants from Peter. However, there is the mildly embarrassing situation that there is nothing in the New Testament, not a single word that ever places Peter in Rome. Now, that doesn't mean he didn't. He wasn't there. Uh, New Testament doesn't talk about St. John Chrysostom either, and St. John Chrysostom existed, right? So I'm not saying because it's not in the New Testament, it couldn't have happened. But for their case, wouldn't it have been better if somewhere, you know, stuffed at the end of Jude or something, it's, oh, by the way, Peter showed up at Rome on such and such a day. But there's nothing in the New Testament that puts Peter in Rome. So you can see this is a pretty big difference interpreting those passages as faith as opposed to uh, Peter's the head of the church and all authority of the church um, comes from him. And, uh, you know, the that's, that's that's so the quiet, nobody's arguing that Peter's the rock. The, the argument is, uh, is how do you interpret that? What's that mean? shows that